Hey now, what is up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I said I would be back to do a spoiler review for Spider-Man No Way Home. So here I am! Alright, this time I did take notes. I do have some thoughts on each and everything. So if you have not seen this film, I've warned you, go away now and come back when you're ready to hear the juicy goodness so, first things first, Peter Parker's reveal, uh, his identity being revealed from the end of the last movie, the way how it starts this film off. I loved it. I love that not only are we picking right back up with the dialogue of Mysterio revealing everything, but even seeing the scene of him and Zendaya in New York and Times Square and being chased by that mob of people and by the news. And, like, we got to see. It was always a what-if scenario, or we could always debate in our heads as far as how would it play out if the public found out about Peter Parker being Spider-Man. And you saw that it was not good. Not only was it bad news for Peter, but it was bad news for everybody around him. I love how Doctor Strange put it into perspective as far as, like, really? You guys are complaining about not being able to get into college? But for kids their age, yeah, it's a big deal. And they didn't do anything. They were just there for him, and they are being punished for it. We got Matt Murdock, people. I know it was rumored. I know that pictures were leaked. But it was never confirmed until I saw it with my own eyes. I had to see the man for myself. And by God, when he just walked into their apartment. And it's Charlie Cox, by the way, as Matt Murdock. And he's giving Peter legal advice and telling them, all of them, what their options were. I just, my mind was blown. There was a few people in the theater who clapped and cheered. But I was beside myself. I for how much I love that Daredevil show, and still to this day, it's it's my favorite superhero TV show of all time. It was so great to see. I love the moment where somebody threw something in their window, and Murdoch caught it in front of Peter, and Peter even said, how did you do that? And he just said, I'm a really good lawyer. And that's it! It was such fan service stuff. And I don't want to say fan service and have people think that that's a bad thing or have it feel like those are negatives. No, fan service can be a good thing. Seeing Doctor Strange cast the spell, I know that people talked about from the trailers, like, oh, is Doctor Strange evil? Is this the evil Doctor Strange, the dark Strange? Uh, why is he so willing to do this? I actually liked the explanation for why Strange was doing it. No, he's not evil. And no, he's not even the Sorcerer Supreme anymore. On the technicality, Wong! is the Sorcerer Supreme, and I like how they at least felt bad for Peter. They understood his predicament, and they felt like this is a harmless enough spell that they could pull it off. The fight between Spider-Man and Dr. Octopus, I loved on the bridge. Dr. Octopus has been my favorite, at least in the movies, Spider-Man's best villain. But that brings me to Green Goblin, Norman Osborn, Willem Dafoe. I love that when he shows up in the classic original suit, which a lot of people dislike, but I, I enjoy it. I do. I like that classic suit. He puts on that purple hoodie, and then towards the end of the film, when he's back to being Goblin, he looks great. Like, that version, and without him, like, being able to finally see Willem's face, because he can make himself look creepy, he can make himself look Goblin-like, you don't have to put makeup on, you don't have to make him look silly, he can pull off that evilness. He did some heinous, heinous things. He established in this film why he is Spider-Man's most dangerous villain, why he will have a huge impact on even this Spider-Man's life. The other villains, you have Electro, which it was actually pretty cool to see Jamie Foxx back. They reworked him. They didn't fully explain why he's different or, and looks different. It's kind of just because he's in a different world, but no one else really looked all that different. Who cares? I don't need an explanation because I didn't like how he was in 
the Amazing Spider-Man 2, so I liked the change. I liked him much more. Also, you have Sandman, who... Uh, it was weird that he never changed back into human form. Like, obviously, he can make himself look human while still having the Sandman powers, but he didn't do it. We didn't see him human until the very end when he was supposedly cured. Same thing with Lizard. He never went back to being human form at all throughout the entire film. And my only complaint, really at all, throughout this entire film is that they didn't take the opportunity. When all of the villains went into Happy's house to start experimenting with Peter and Lizard decided to stay in the truck for whatever reason, you should have had him go in the apartment and put on a lab coat. So then you would have had Lizard wearing a lab coat, which is what I've been wanting for so long. Aunt May dies, people. Holy shit, I did not expect this. I didn't see it coming. I figured that somebody would die in this movie because it is the culmination, the trilogy, and this Peter hasn't experienced that level of tragedy besides Tony Stark, but everybody lost Tony Stark. Someone that was personal to Peter, I kind of figured it was coming, but I thought it would be either Happy or Zendaya or even Ned. But when Aunt May dies, it was brutal. This was the first crying moment that I had, and it was pure sadness. It was pure, oh, Marissa Tomei. The way how she, she gets hit with the Goblin's Glider, which is what kills her. But the fact that we don't know how bad the blow is, you know, she says she's okay. She gives Peter the speech by saying, it's okay. You're doing the right thing trying to save them. And she gives him the with great power comes great responsibility line. And I love that they didn't try to change it like the Amazing Spider-Man. Like, oh, he's pretty much saying it, but not really. No, she said the same words. And she's his Uncle Ben. She's giving him the speech. She's giving him the moral compass that he will have going forward. Andrew Garfield shows up. After all that time, after all those months, and I feel bad for Andrew Garfield because he had to sit there during so many interviews and he had to lie about it. He, he was constantly being questioned about it. And it sucks. It sucks because all he wanted to do was preserve this surprise. And it was a great surprise. I like I couldn't believe how nostalgic I was for Andrew Garfield, which I like his Spider-Man. I like him as Spider-Man, but his movies, not as much. But this movie paid great respect to him. It made me miss him in the role. It made me want to see more Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. So many great moments with him and interacting with the other Spider-Men. And then we get Toby. God damn, do we get Tobey Maguire. It was surreal to see Toby's Peter back, especially because, like, Andrew's at least wearing the suit. Toby, it seems like when the group meets him, he kind of already has an idea of what's going on, and he too is trying to figure stuff out. He's dressed in normal clothes. He looks older. Like, you're just sitting there going like, wow, I have so many questions about this specific Peter, Toby, and where he is in his life and career. Again, I, I want to see more of this dude. When you see him in the costume, it just was so satisfying seeing all three of these Spider-Men interact. And I thought, because everybody assumed that they would be there, right? But we never really knew. It was a possibility that maybe they weren't. But I thought to myself, if they are here, I didn't expect it to be this much. I didn't think we would get this much of them in the movie with so many scenes of just great character stuff, catching up with those Spider-Men and what they have going on. Like, it was great. Andrew Garfield, too. Such a good actor. He is. Not only talking about losing Gwen and whatnot, but the scene later on when he saves Zendaya... And he starts crying because he wishes he could have done that for himself to save Gwen. But he's also crying because he knows how much this Peter couldn't afford to lose his MJ. You know, like it, it 
So many layers. Obviously the big battle, the big fight. It was so cool to see the Spider-Man not just work together, but have to figure out how to work together. The other ones never have heard of the Avengers before. They don't have Avengers in their world. It's them uh, figuring out that like Toby has organic web shooters and how not weird it was. They were fascinated by it. Andrew cracking Toby's back for him and Andrew just saying man I always wanted brothers the three of them sciencing each other out at the lab where they're creating antidotes for all of the villains holy hell whose ever idea this was who's whoever said hey we should have a bunch of these sequences with all three Spider-Men they're they're genius I love you whoever you are and then at the end, when I thought they were going to kill Toby, when he gets stabbed by Goblin, fuck. That was shocking. I mean, thankfully, he doesn't die. I even like how he said, it's okay, I've been stabbed before. But still, there was a moment where I said, don't you dare, you've already pained me. You've already had a major character die. Don't do this again. Doctor Strange is trying to stop the other... Uh, forces from coming in and i think you even saw like i didn't catch every reference but i did see a rhino you know like you do see certain characters and i wish i can go back and see who else they were teasing i'm surprised they just didn't go for it i'm surprised they just didn't let all these other villains and characters show up to set up a sinister six or to set up so many things like no they concluded it peter came up with a solution and he told dr strange to create a spell where everyone forgets about him. Everyone, including MJ, everyone. And I need to mention how much I cared about Peter and MJ's relationship, how much they felt like a real great couple. And so this ending was so heartbreaking as well. The scene where Peter goes to talk to her and he has his note on what he's going to say, but when he sees her... And he sees that like she's about she got into college and he sees the cut on her head, the band-aid, and he thinks to himself, like, man, if I do this, it's gonna put her in danger. It's gonna F her up. It could possibly ruin her life again. I'm just gonna walk away. Again, Peter making the tough decisions, the tough choices, so hard, so selfless. The the best of us is Peter Parker, Spider-Man. I want the next movie now. God damn you for making me wait. A great moment of Peter at the gravesite of Aunt May. He has the last moment with Happy. So I guess the spell of everyone forgetting Peter Parker or Spider-Man, maybe that's how they write Spider-Man out of the MCU. At least they have that there just in case. And so that sense, he can just be in this corner doing his own thing and it doesn't affect anything i don't know how this affects morbius because you know that there's certain references and stuff in that movie that might not make as much sense and then you see peter get his own apartment he's certainly growing up i guess he didn't get into college oh he didn't even finish high school i'm trying to figure out like he had a box with a ged thing in there and so yeah i guess he's he didn't finish school. Last moment of him swinging through New York and it's snowing. His suit even looks slightly different. And so it's like, wow, I want to know where we go off from here. If we do, maybe we don't. Maybe this is it for Tom Holland. That would suck because I feel like he's so good. The mid credit scene is we see Tom Hardy's Eddie Brock venom he's in mexico i think and he's talking to a dude and he's kind of being caught up on everything that happened in the mcu he's being told about iron man and hulk and everything and i thought okay like why isn't he going away like all the other characters did to go back to their universe but then he does and, it, and so i guess they just had this scene here to wrap up the end credit scene of him being in the universe at the end of his let there be carnage movie right it's just like oh okay so he doesn't meet spider-man he doesn't interact with him even though he said i should go to new york and meet him i guess he doesn't or he won't which ultimately feels like well why they do that at all in the first place if the doctor strange spell 
it got messed up and it brought in people from the other universes who knew that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. So why was Venom there? Venom not only doesn't know that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, but he wouldn't know. Um, he hasn't met a Peter Parker or a Spider-Man. Unless you're saying that the symbiote somehow has a weird level of consciousness knowledge of it. I don't know. They didn't explain it. Maybe they will later on. There was a little piece of symbiote uh, goo that was left here. And so whatever that means, I hope that just means that we will get a black suit Spider-Man at some point. The end, end, end credits shocked me that it was kind of a trailer, if not a teaser, of Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness. Wow, I did not expect to get that. It was a pleasant surprise. It had some weird, trippy stuff going on. They actually are addressing Multiverse. They are addressing Scarlet Witch. Wanda shows up. This was a blast. I am glad that I was able to talk about this with you guys. I know that I have some friends who actually are texting me right now as I speak to talk about this movie. And this will be something that we will continue to talk about. I will continue to rewatch many more times to come. So let me know in the comments below. Spoiler time here. What were some of your favorite moments of the movie? Did you cry? What were some of the best things that you have as a takeaway? What do you want to see next going forward? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later. Later.